So the lineup is still the same in this game. McCutcheon is still in right field. The only difference is Garrett Cole is on the mound. And I apologize for everybody, or to everybody, if you are just, uh, if you want to see somebody else in left field other than the Reds, Griffey, I need to do this mission. I mean, it would be nice if they if they gave you how many games you've played so far, right? Like, I'm, they got motherfuckers sitting here guessing how many games they have played for missions you have to do in a certain amount of games. So that, that needs to be something that needs to be put in this game. When they give you missions, when you only have a certain amount of games to do it, they should give you how many games you have played because I legit don't even know how many games I've played so far with the Reds Griffey because, like I said, I've been playing a lot of BR lately. And I at least probably played around 14, 15 games and ranked seasons with this Reds Griffey so far. I mean, it may not be that much, but it's, it's definitely around there. But it would definitely be nice if they gave you how many games you've played so far. So hopefully that could be something that's put in the game on a later date. But Granderson wasn't able to get off to a good start in this game, surprisingly. I mean, I just got under that one, looking to go deep with Granderson. Granderson has been a very good leadoff hitter for the squad. I mean, I really don't want to put him anywhere else in the lineup. And like I said, I like using him in center field. That's why McCutcheon isn't right. But if I do move someone else in the field, then, you know, if I just take McCutcheon out, I'm probably going... Or if I take Granderson out, I'm probably going to move uh, McCutcheon back to center at some point in time. Definitely going to use McCutcheon for a little bit. But McCutcheon isn't able to get a base hit in his first at-bat, so he's left off the score sheet so far. Fred McGriff is up next. I mean, I'm still waiting. I am still waiting for that Fred McGriff breakout game. Swing and a drive to right. There it goes. And out of here. And I mean by plenty. That ball was crushed. I don't know if it's just me, but does anyone else think that 500-foot home runs are happening on a daily basis in this game? I mean, that wasn't 500 feet exactly, but 491 is pretty damn close. And I've heard a lot of people say, I've seen a lot of videos and shit where people have been getting five, like almost 600 foot home runs and shit in this game so far so i'm not sure if that's just you know a glitch or something that it's just showing up that you know these home runs are 550 feet or something but all i know is i don't even think i got one 500 foot home run in mlb 16 and then first like pretty much first two weeks of this game i've been pushing 500 feet on two, well i've already got 500 and i've already hit a 509 foot home run with reggie jackson but there's been a couple other occurrences, too, when I've been close to 500 feet, too. So it's only first two weeks in this game. And 500-foot home runs seems to be something that's going to be happening a lot. But, I mean, that's something that everyone probably enjoys seeing. So that's not really anything to complain about. I guess a lot of people are complaining about uh, home runs being overpowered. The only thing I can say about that is I find that the only way they're overpowered is when, when people start going on or just start going on... Uh, they get uh, rallies going. I find that that's when home runs become OP'd a little bit, is when uh, people get rallies going. You string together two or three hits in a row, it is impossible to stop people's rallies. Like in MLB 16, all you had to do was just take the pitcher out who was getting destroyed pretty much, and I found that it was you know not easy, but it would be easier to stop the madness. But this game, you can go to any single person in the pen. People will still be dominating. People will be stringing together nine, ten hits in a row. Be getting three, four home runs in a row. So, I mean, maybe that's, I don't know. That just seems, that's just my opinion so far. I just find that home runs are only overpowered when people string together rallies. That's it. I mean, if you, obviously, if you make, like, solid contact and shit with somebody with amazing power, it's most likely going to leave the yard. So I don't, I don't think that home runs are overpowered in this game. I just think that rallies are kind of, you know, they're giving people chances to start rallies very easily. I mean, yeah, once you get two base hits in a row, it seems to be impossible to stop people. So, yeah, I wasn't able to get any more runs in the first inning after that solo shot from McGriff. So, yeah, man, I was saying, I'm looking for that Fred McGriff breakout game. I think I had a couple other games with Fred McGriff that I actually played pretty decent with him, but people were leaving games, so I was only able to get, you know, one or two at-bats with him, and then I wasn't able to finish the game, so it would have been nice to see what would happen the rest of that game. Anthony Rendon lines out to right field right there. Somebody I haven't really discussed that much when it was, you know, regarding who's been doing very good at the plate so far offensively. This flashback, Alcides Escobar, has been going off, man. Like, I haven't talked about this guy at all, really. I mean, I haven't at the bottom of the lineup or just batting in the 8th spot because I'm looking for that speed at the bottom of the lineup, but he may have to be moved up in the lineup because it seems like 
Every single thing that Escobar makes contact with is finding, finding the grass, finding a hole, just getting on base. So that's another base hit for Escobar right there. That was a late swing on a curveball, and that lands in right field, just a little blooper over the first baseman. So Escobar is on base. That is big because the pitcher doesn't have to lead off in the next inning. So Escobar with that speed, too, able to steal second easily right there. So now Garrett Cole is... Uh, in, a, in a situation where he can cash in another run. I mean, too bad this wasn't CC Sabathia because, no joke, man, I've been doing better at the plate with CC Sabathia than some people in my starting lineup, 100%. So that was a very ugly at bat. I mean, I just kind of wanted to get it over with because, you know, next inning, just waiting for the next inning to come around. It would have been nice if I could, you know, at least gonna, if I could try to get a base hit right there, that would have been nice. Possibly scored Escobar from second base, but not too worried. Now we're in the bottom of the second inning. Still only got the one-run lead, obviously. This guy uh, wasn't able to get that much going offensively uh, against Garrett Cole. He was, I think I struck him out a couple times, first two innings or so. So right there, he's chasing something in the dirt again. And then Soto, dude. I don't think Soto has let one ball through the wickets. So again, Lou Croy is on the bench. He's, he's sitting there with the, pen, with the pen and paper, the notepad, on his lap. He's, 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 he's taking notes. On Giovanni Soto because he's blocked everything so far. So J Jonathan Lucroy in this game might be just a glitch or something in a bad way. Because, yeah, I've heard a couple people say that Lucroy has been an issue for them. Although I have heard a couple people say, too, that Lucroy hasn't been a problem for them. So I don't know, man. May it, it, Lucroy seems to be a topic of discussion when it comes to catchers in this game so far. And then some people have been saying that they've been using bronze catchers and shit and they're blocking everything. Who have, you know, 60-something blocking. I mean, I think Lucroy, his blocking isn't amazing, but it's, what, 78? So that's not too bad. That's not, you know, disgustingly atrocious or something. That's all right. But for everything to go through his legs and just not being able to keep anything in front of him is kind of ridiculous if with 78 blocking. Here is when Granderson starts to pop off. That's another home run on the board. Another moonshot on the board for the squad. Granderson gets yet another home run. Not even sure how many he has. He might be leading the team in home runs, I think. Maybe. I I'm just trying to think right now. Granderson may be leading the squad in home runs so far, so that's what you want for a leadoff guy. Speed, you know, good contact versus righties, and he also has that power. So McCutcheon, second at bat of this game. Swinging and missing on the slider for the first pitch, but then curveball hanging over the middle of the plate. Wasn't able to get a base hit right there or get anything right there, so McCutcheon just grounds out again. So now Griffey, nobody is on base. So, I mean, still looking to send one deep to possibly get one RBI on the board. Just get another home run on the board. I think I have six home runs at this moment, like I said in the video yesterday. I think it's around six. I need to check that. I say in every single video, I need to check that. And then I forget every single time a game finishes. So, uh, yeah, I think I have around uh, six. Right there, I'm able to make some pretty decent contact. Late swing. So, I mean, if it was able to leave the yard, that would have been kind of lucky for myself. But just to the warning track, he's ma he makes the grab for the final out of that inning. So now, bottom of the third, this guy needs to get something going possibly. Even though I only got a two-run lead, not too much of it. Look at Soto again, man. Like, come on. Come on! Soto again blocks it in the dirt, throws him out easily. That's when, ra that, you know what, why I always discuss that in videos is because that's how rallies get started. When you strike somebody out, and then it goes right through the wickets of your catcher, and then that's how rallies get started. You get somebody on base, and then that's when two or three base hits in a row start to come in play. You know what I mean? And then home runs are being hit, and it's just like, damn. All my catcher had to do was block the ball, and then this would have been avoided. So, I mean, Soto, I don't even know... Who else I could possibly pick up? I haven't sold, I haven't quick sold Luke Roy yet, I should say. So, I know some people are probably uh, wanting to see him back in the lineup, and I know that's just because they want to hear me go off on him again. So maybe that I don't know, maybe maybe I can give that bastard another chance and see what he could do, man. Because yeah, if he comes in and does what he was doing in the first week or so of this game, I will be quick selling him 100% because. Uh, yeah, that, that'll just be the case because there's no chance in hell that I'm going to be using this guy who can't block anything behind the plate. And Soto, Soto has worse blocking than Lucroy in this game too. So that just goes to show you that I guess the blocking stat doesn't really matter that much in this game. So almost through three innings now and this guy still doesn't have a base hit on the board. So Garrett Cole is uh, getting the job done pretty much. Uh, second out of this inning is a fly ball behind first base. McGriff makes that grab. McGriff has played uh, pretty decent in the field too. I think his I think his fielding is only 59. So somebody like that 
can possibly be a liability in the field, but not so much. McGriff has played half decent in the field, better than half decent. Hasn't made one error, I don't think. So his pitcher goes down swinging. So now Kipnis is up. Kipnis actually may be leading the team in home runs, actually, now that I think about it. Because he did get three in that one game. Oh, he almost had four. He could have had four in that game. And right there, he delivers again. So I need to check that. I need to check the stats for the squad, see who's leading the squad in home runs and shit, because I'm going to try and get some Moonshot squad action going on again. Kipnis wasn't, you know, something 450 feet or something close to 500 feet, but it definitely makes it over the fence. And then this is when you know the game isn't going your way. When the catcher, when Soto steps up to the plate and hits a little dribbler down the third baseline, and you make it into first base, that's how you know the game isn't going your way. So now Rendon is up, Mr. Liability in the field himself. Going to have to pick up another third baseman at some point in time for what Rendon has been doing lately. I think there was actually a foul ball this guy had earlier in this game that Rendon uh, tried to bare hand, and he missed, missed it again. So yeah, the, the last like three ground balls that Rendon has got have been whiffed on pretty much. So getting the walk right there, kind of lucky. I mean, I've seen a lot of those go uh, the opposite way for myself when I've been on the mound, so I can't, nobody complain about that. Look at Escobar again. I've been saying it. He's been doing amazing at the plate. Cashes in, uh, gets two RBIs right there, gets the double. So Escobar again, man, two for two on this game, so, or in this game so far. So got the four nothing lead so far, or five nothing lead so far. This guy pauses. I think he's going to the pen. You right? You think you no? Offering me a friendly quit. What does this guy think this is? Offering me a friendly quit. This guy leaves. Man, people need to get a grip or something. People are leaving games way too often in this game. That's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a thumbs up. I will see you guys in those videos I post tomorrow.